Hey everybody, welcome back to live tutorials on the Beating Dreams stream. It's been um, a couple weeks of sales and then us being dark because I was on a shopping trip and then unboxing and sales and now we're finally, finally back to our regular schedule which is amazing. I'm so happy to be back string, uh, not streaming, but streaming live tutorials for y'all um, on Facebook and Twitch. But Today was supposed to be our upcycled flatware bracelet tutorial, which I put, hi Ace, um, which I put on the schedule because, first of all, I had no time last week with all the new merchandise stuff to um, do new class samples, and second, I completely failed that tutorial the first time I tried to teach it. I bit it hard, um, and so I really wanted a redo. However, if you're doing an upcycled flatware project, do you know what you need to bring to work with you? Exactly! Carol May got it! Yeah, I didn't. I did not grab any of my, like, you know, random silver crafting flatware. And yes, that is a thing I actually have. And yes, I know I'm weird. But, um, yeah, I didn't grab any of that today on my way to work. So, um, we're doing a switcheroo. So I'm actually going to do Saturday's tutorial this evening. And I'm going to do the upcycled flatware tutorial on Saturday. Um, so, loomed gemstone bracelet. Now, also, I'm, I, you know, you don't stream tutorials for three weeks and, and things get, um, you forget things. And so I also forgot to, um, uh, long story short, I forgot to download the, the project photo, so I had to pull it off my website. It's a very low resolution photo. So this is a very blurry rendition of what we're doing today, the loomed gemstone bracelet. Yes, it is small and blurry. Sorry about that, y'all. I promise I will have my shit at least mostly together by noon stream tomorrow, or at least that is my hope. So loomed gemstone bracelet, what do we need to do this project? You're going to need um, three or four millimeter gemstone beads and your only thing here is you need to make sure that you can fit a beading needle through the holes of the gemstone beads. Now with all of these pretty um, round faceted beads coming out of China that's not as much of a chore as it used to be when all the faceted beads came out of India and the holes were very very small. Um, the Chinese holes average about 0.7 millimeters so that's usually not a problem but you see to make sure that whatever needle you've chosen for your project will fit through your beads. How many beads do you need? You need about six or seven inches of three to four millimeter faceted round beads. You're also going to need leather. Two feet of leather should suffice. You are going to need a button. So this cute little brass button. Um, you can use a, a two hole button like I have or you can use a shank button. Either one is fine. Um, and then you're going to need fire line. So fire line is um, it's actually, it literally is fishing line. See, there's a fish um, that has been appropriated by the um, beading community. What are you doing that's making your hands blue? Writing with your blue sharpie that has leaves all over the barrel of it. Why are you writing with that sharpie then? Well, because I'm already blue. Might as well continue. It writes really well. Okay. I feel like there was a song about that. <laughs> Just saying. Um, so yeah, so fire line is actually fishing line that was appropriated by the beading world um, and I have no idea how that actually happened, but my, my fantasy, my urban legend is that some woman, hi Lori, was um, beading and she decided to grab her husband's fishing line and discovered it worked much better than the, um, <laughs> <coughs> than the thread that she was using, but <clears throat> Oh yeah, I can see you too. But if you hadn't pointed it out, no one would have known that was you. It's true. Um, yeah, so fire line. Uh, beading needle, size of your choice. A size 10 is usually good. We're at a size 10, so I'm actually using a size 13. Um, hypo cement. That's just going to be for your finishing. And some kind of sharp scissors. Oh, and there's my original needle. Oh, yeah. Yay. Um, and so for anybody um, who's joining us a little bit late, we are not doing our scheduled upcycle flatware tutorial tonight because someone forgot to bring flatware to work. So it was not Heather, it was totally me. And so we're doing the um, loomed gemstone bracelet instead. We'll do upcycled flatware on Saturday. So I'm going to start by taking my fire line and cutting myself um, about five feet 
of it, and so since I'm about five feet tall, a double arm span of that is going to equal approximately five feet. This is one of those instances where you don't really have to measure super carefully. And I'm going to turn that off, and then I'm going to thread it into my beading needle. So um, threading the needle is almost always one of the more difficult parts of this project. So as far as helpful hints go, um, the, the technique that always works best for me is to hold my thread between my index finger and my thumb and then just kind of roll my finger pads over the thread then take the eye of my needle place it on top of that thread and then just push it up through the eye like so and then what you can do especially if you have fingernails is you can then grab it and you can pull it through um, and this for me is the most reliable way of threading a beading needle um, it's hard to get a needle threader okay size 13s are tough because they're eyes are VV small. Um, so it's tough to get a needle threader for a beading needle because the eyes are so small that um, most of your threaders will actually break your needle. desperate times call for desperate measures. Nope, I just bit the thread on the internet. And all is well now. I just needed a better grip than I could get with my um, fingernails. So, now I have my thread thread it onto my needle and I've got a fairly long tail. Okay, my tail is about a foot, foot and a half long. By tail I mean this extra piece of thread out here that's not actually, you know, our working thread. And then I've got a decent amount of working thread as well. So now I'm going to set that aside for just a minute. I'm going to make sure that I don't lose it. If you do this a lot, a needle minder is a great thing, which is just a little magnet that you'll plop your needles on so you always know where they are. And they make all kinds of really fun and snarky needle minders these days, um, which is really cool. So I'm going to take my leather now and I'm going to fold it in half. And I'm going to put it down through the two holes of my button. So this is the upside of my button. This is the reverse of my button. So I'm going to take it and I'm going to put the upside of my button up. And I'm going to go down through those two holes. Now, one of the fun things about these brass buttons the holes aren't always completely opened. So what I'm actually going to do first is I'm going to find a pokey thing. And I'm going to just sort of open up my holes a little bit so that my leather will go through. So Lori, how is everything in your neck of the woods and what delicious food have you made while we have been away? at Denver and selling things and unboxing things. I have been sick for like three days with um, terrible, well okay, I've had terrible allergies for about a week and for the past three days they've been really trying to turn into bronchitis on me. So I I finally got my appetite back today. I was finally able to eat solid food yesterday. Um, so now I am interested to hear what everyone's been eating while I've been gone. So let's try this again. Hopefully I opened up these holes big enough and we're going to go down with this. Also, um, I, have, I have breaking news that is continually updating that I will um, tell everyone about on the stream um, about my neighbor's cat. Yum. Sounds very good. I actually also had, I had Mexican yesterday, but we, my mom and I ordered. I did not cook because I was not feeling up to it. Plus, my mom doesn't like my cooking, so there's that. But, um, I had chicken fajitas, but I didn't realize I ordered, I ordered their smart chicken fajitas, um, which means they came with no cheese and no sour cream. 
was not a fan of that. If you want cheese and sour cream, you have to get apparently the dumb chicken fajitas. So I've got my leather down through my button and I want to make sure that my ends are fairly even. They don't have to be completely even, but fairly even. And now I'm going to go back to my thread that I threaded onto my needle and I'm going to go to the end completely opposite my needle. Okay, so this is the end that is completely opposite my needle and I'm going to take that end and I'm just going to tie it onto one of these two pieces of leather. So I'm going to do this one and I'm just going to put it under there and I'm going to tie it on. So and just tie a good square knot or as close as you can get to a square knot and that's going to attach that thread onto my leather I want to push that right up a little bit closer to my button Apparently I'm going to hit my camera because that's what I do and now I'm going to go ahead and um, start adding my beads. So I'm going to take my bead strand and I'm just going to cut off the end so that I can access my beads. And I'm going to find my needle. Alright, so now I'm going to go to the needle end of my thread. So I have on one end of my thread I have it tied onto my leather and button construction and on the other end of the thread is my needle. So I'm going to take one bead, place that onto my needle, okay really? There we go. Alright, so bead goes onto my needle and I'm going to go ahead and pull that all the way down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bead and I'm just going to set it in between my two pieces of leather, like so. Can you get any brighter? Cool. Alright, set it between my two pieces of leather, like so. So, this is called loomed gemstone bracelet because it is made with the same technique that you use when you're bead looming. So when you're when you're making loom work, beading, what you have is you have an actual apparatus um, called a bead loom, and you've strung it with a series of threads. These are your warp threads, and what you do is you will string a number of beads on your needle. You will go under the warp threads, pop the beads up, um, through the warp threads and then go back through the beads but over top of the warp threads with your needle so your beads are essentially trapped by those two threads so in this particular situation your um, your leather is your warp thread so what I've done is I've gone under my leather now I'm gonna grab my needle and I'm gonna go back over my leather through my bead This extra piece just needs to stay out of the way. So back over my leather. Wow, I can't see anything today. That is not cool. There. So back over my leather and through my bead, like so. So this thread is going under the leather and then the needle is coming back over the leather. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold everything in place and I'm going to pull this thread all the way through. And then we're going to tighten everything up by doing a little bit of a shimmy. So basically I'm going to take this thread, my working thread, and I'm going to hold everything lightly and I'm just going to pull it and shimmy it and see how that pulls everything down nice and close together. Awesome. Now we're going to go ahead and grab another bead with our needle pull that bead all the way down and then once again we're going to repeat this so we want this to go 
Well, what the heck? How did I do that? I just broke the fire line. Oh, what? Thank you. That's not as easy as I made it look. No. Fire line is a gel spun polyethylene thread. It's extremely strong, very difficult to break, except apparently for me right now. So um, I'm going to vamp for a second um, while I start this project again and get back to where I was when I just broke that. Um, so I'm going to tell you guys the story of uh, the currently developing story. I may have more developments um, when I get on stream for the sale, but the, the currently developing story of my neighbor's cat. So my both my cats and my neighbor's cat are indoor-outdoor, and um, I have started locking my cats in at night, but she pretty much lets hers free range. So her cat, who is cleverly named Mr. Kitty, he's a really sweet cat. He's very pretty. He's not very smart. Um, so Mr. Kitty didn't come home two nights ago. And of course she was very worried in the morning and she went out looking for Mr. Kitty and then I took a walk around the neighborhood looking for Mr. Kitty. No evidence of Mr. Kitty was found, which is, is good in the sense that there were no squashed cat corpses in the road, but bad of course in the sense that we didn't actually find the cat. And so, you know, I'm like, okay, we're like, okay, maybe he could be locked in somebody's yard, locked in somebody's garage, like at this point there's nothing to do but wait. So he didn't come home again last night, so by this time she's really worried. And she is a social person, which I am not. So she has really good relationships, she knows all the neighbors, she's got all their phone numbers and, you know, probably knows their birthdays and everything like that. And that, that's just not me. I, I don't have the mental energy to be that good of a neighbor. So she starts calling the neighbors or probably texting the neighbors asking if anybody's seen Mr. Kitty. And so finally she gets a text back from a neighbor across the street who had texted his neighbor. And it turns out that Mr. Kitty has been up a tree in, in this like tangential neighbor's backyard now for two nights. Um, so so now they're in the process of figuring out how to get Mr. Kitty down from the tree. Um, in case anyone was wondering, the fire department does not actually retrieve cats from trees. That is a Hollywood trope. That is not actually true. Um, so uh, last I heard, they had called upon an arborist who occasionally retrieves cats to come and rescue Mr. Kitty from the tree. So I'm, I'm waiting for an update on, on did Mr. Kitty get down from the tree and is he okay? Meanwhile, back at the, back at the Beating Dreams, I have actually gotten back to the spot where I was on this project when the fire line inexplicably broke on me. So I got my second bead and that's once again gonna go underneath. So see how this thread is underneath my beads in between my leathers and the threads passing underneath this piece of leather and then it's going to go, my needle is going to go back over the top of my leather and through my bead. Yeah, Mr. Kitty isn't bright, but he is pretty. I really though, this is a cat that is not super athletic. He's a little on the older side and he's a little on the chonky side. How the hell did he get up a tree? Um. I'm guessing that something chased him up there and then he just, you know, was fueled by adrenaline and then got stuck. That's the only thing I can think of. Okay, so that's two beads. Now we're going to go for bead number three. <laughs> but wow. Yeah, and she said he, he won't move to try and get himself down from the tree, which, um, makes me think he's either hurt by whatever chased him up the tree or he's just ouch exhausted and dehydrated he's been meowing apparently constantly for the past two days i didn't even think to look up in the trees when i did my little circuit of the neighborhood of like where's mr kitty like that didn't even occur to me um but so he still has enough in him to meow so hopefully he'll be okay all right and then so that's under and i'm going to take my needle back over and through my bead. Like so. Uh, 
and then once again you can do the little shimmy to tighten. You want to make sure you keep your tension even so you don't want your bracelet to start curving one way or the other. Okay, so now I'm just going to continue adding beads to this um, until I've got a bracelet leg. So same procedure, I'm just going to pull a few beads off my strand so they're easier to get to. So on the Beading Dreams sale stream, which is going to start around 7.30, 7.45 tonight, we have more new merchandise for you. Um, I have no idea what exactly is going to be on from the new merchandise, but um, some cool stuff because all I got was cool stuff. No, I'm going to find some cool stuff for you tonight. Um, I know, I don't think I finished... I don't know. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to consult my auxiliary brain, which is named Heather, with what we've actually already put on stream, and then we're going to go from there. Yeah, I, I feel like, Robin, that maybe that would have been possible, uh, like, yesterday, but I have a feeling if he's been up a tree for two days, he's probably exhausted and dehydrated and probably doesn't have the strength to come down at this point. Why are you standing with your hands on your hips? Because I'm the auxiliary brain and I didn't hear. Oh, I just, what should I, what have I already put on stream? Like, have I done all the tiny shinies? No, you've definitely not done all the tiny shinies. Okay, so we'll probably have tiny shinies tonight, and then some other stuff that I haven't put on yet. Some of the, some of the my assumption, I mean, since they haven't been super communicative, but my assumption is they took what they wanted. Or Which what they wanted nothing. to think. No, it wasn't nothing. There was definitely stuff missing from oh, that okay. tray. Okay. Yeah, so they took what they wanted to think about and then brought back the rest. Okay. I'm fairly certain. Okay. Um, okay. Sorry. No, you're fine. So yeah, just I'm I'm waiting for waiting for a Mr. Kitty update. So um hopefully I'll have an update of some sort by the time it's the sale stream. I'm sorry. For what? Some of the, making all that noise. Some of the food was trapped. How absolute dare, Heather. Oh, I don't know. Just because I moved all your stuff around. Oh, but look, Heather has all of her new shelves up. I'm going to turn on your camera, so stay back there. Okay. Look, she has all her new shelves up. She's got three beautiful shelves and plenty of room for all the shipping stuff and all the other stuff. So this is, um, I'm excited by Heather's new shelves, personally. Now I just need to get new shelves for me and get my shit organized. That's hilarious. So yeah, so new merchandise tonight, also more new merchandise on. Saturday here on the Beating Dream stream. Tomorrow we are back to two tutorial Thursday. So I will be doing a uh, lunchtime tutorial on Thursday and that's going to be our tablet earrings. And no, I don't have a picture of that one either because, okay, so here's here's the story about that. All right, I'm just going to put my um, hands on the screen so you guys can watch me. Okay, so I took a lot of photos in Denver, and some of you may have seen on Facebook and, um, oh, just Facebook, because it was too long for Insta. Um, I actually took a really cool video of these guys who were um, putting a seven foot tall sodalite obelisk on top of a four foot tall sodalite pedestal. And it was amazing, like just watching them work the forklift and, and all of this. And so I wanted to, and it took them 30 minutes, which considering the just sheer mass of what they were moving, I think is pretty darn impressive. Um, and I will go ahead and I, I never did update or upload that video to Discord. Um, I will go ahead and do that, um, hopefully in between streams. But so I wanted to edit that video and put captions on it. I needed to take out the audio for a couple of reasons. Number one was there was a lot of forklift beeping, backing up beeping in that video. Number two, um, the guy behind me said fuck at least three times. So I, you know, I needed to edit it and also it was 28 minutes, so I needed to speed it up. So I am a cheapskate, in case you didn't know this about me, so I don't 
pay for cloud storage. I have, you know, whatever they give you for free, which of course was almost full. So, I had to download a bunch of, so, cause God forbid I should actually pay for storage. So that's my beat going on there. And then, Swinging. I always put my needle in my mouth. Can you tell? I can't talk that way. Swinging under and popping it up. So again, I just took that bead, swung it underneath, made sure it wound up in between those two leathers and popped it up and then take my needle right back through. So God forbid I should just, you know, pay the $15 a month or whatever. That needle just fell out for the paid storage. Oh no, 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 no. Allison's not gonna stand for this. So I downloaded a bunch of stuff from my cloud storage onto my laptop, including the folder with all of the class photos. And I forgot to re-upload it. So yeah, this is what comes from being a cheapskate. You run into you run into trouble down the line. Just throw the money at the problem to begin with, and it will work out much better. So yes, I have a lot of work to do tonight, including um, re-uploading those photos from my laptop to the cloud since I've already edited the video now and I don't need the video to be in the cloud anymore. Um, plus, now that it is four and a half minutes long instead of 28 minutes long, it takes up a lot less storage space. But it was really freaking cool just watching these guys. And they were so nice. Um, the company they work for is called um, Elgato Big Rocks. And they were very big rocks. Hi, Silvern! <laughs> so, Corvus, hi. Did you make it through the whole six hours last night? Because Corvus had her two-year anniversary stream last night, and her goal was to stream for six consecutive hours. I did not make it the whole six hours. You did. You are amazing, girlfriend. You are impressive in so many ways. That is only one of them. Um, also, I did realize that it today, and almost at the end of the day, that today is actually my 15th anniversary of taking over beating dreams like literally it's it's the 15th the end of the 15th year um i took over in i heather said she won that's amazing um but yeah i took over um bought beating dreams on september 21st hi sophia welcome back why have you not posted any grease pictures in discord or did i just miss them because I feel like you must have amazing pictures from that trip. Um, but yeah, I officially took, I mean, you know, the deal started in April of 2007. And I officially, like, officially changed hands. And God, the old owner was such, so difficult. And so we actually changed midday on the 21st because she wouldn't give up that half day's worth of income. So um, what we were open from 10 to six at that point, so that's eight hours, so four hours in, so at 2 p.m. on the 21st was when I officially took possession of Beating Dreams. Ah, got it. Ow. Don't, word of advice, don't stab yourself with the needle. Also, Corvus, this is what I did to myself last night while I was watching your stream. Do you see that giant blister? So I was crafting and watching Corvus stream, and I was making feather floofs for Ren Faire hats, and um, I had a, a button that I was going to glue onto the front of the floof as like the, you know, the little, you know, blingy bit, and so I had taken my hot glue and filled like basically filled the entire back of the button with a hot glue and then I went to pick it up and it flipped over and landed right on my finger and anybody who has worked with hot glue knows that it is an absolute 
bitch because not only is it hot, but it sticks to you. So I'm sitting there going, fuck, 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 and like shaking my hand to try and get it to like release from my hand. And then I had to like pull the glue off my hand. Yeah, it was, um, it was, no, there's actually the skin's still there, Corvus. It's just a big um, blister. So, so the skin is still there. So I did not take off a layer of skin. I just gave myself a gigantic, gigantic blister. And then I'm trying to like hold ice on my finger and type on Corvus's stream and still craft. And finally I just gave up on, on all of that. Um, and I did go to my tried and true remedy, which I am not a doctor. So don't anyone like take my advice and sue me if you get an infection. But seriously, yellow mustard on burns is the best thing to take the sting away. Like, I, I tried lidocaine. I actually had lidocaine ointment. Nope. No lidocaine or Like, lidocaine ointment did nothing at all. <laughs> right? Um, but the mustard. The mustard was what finally allowed me to sleep. So, as I'm putting... Um, yeah... The, I mean, the Neosporin for, for not getting infected, but I have the Neosporin that has the lidocaine in it, or whatever the over-the-counter version is. Nope, didn't work either. Like, mustard. I swear, it's the weirdest thing, but for me, it's the only thing that actually stops my burns from stinging. Okay, so when you're putting these beads on, make sure you're keeping your tension even so your bracelet stays straight. Also, hi, Jen! And, um... When you're pulling, try to hold your bead in place because that way you're going to pull and it's going to stay in place as opposed to if you just, um, if you just pull without holding it, it might get, um, tweaked out of place. Yeah, I think the key component, Sophia, is vinegar, which I believe is present in both ketchup and mustard. If it's not, um, tomatoes are acidic, so maybe it's just acid. But, oh man, I am such a baby with burns. Like, I can handle cuts, bruises, you know, broken toes, abrasions, like, pulled muscles. Um, and, and I can power through most of that. But burns, I'm just such a weepy baby about burns. I'm like, why won't it stop hurting? Sorry, that was a caricature of me last night. The cats were no help. Of course, the ha the cats were also no help because I did tell them um, to track down Mr. Kitty and lead us to them, and they did not do that either. I still cannot believe he actually got himself stuck up a tree. That's such a cliche. <laughs> and yet... Somewhere in East Dallas, there's a white cat up a tree. Hopefully soon to be a white cat down from a tree. Safely and in one piece, not just like... Because I don't think Mr. Kitty can fly like a sugar glider. Okay, Ace, Heather made that same suggestion. Apparently, my, my cat has a reputation for being diabolical. Ace just suggested that Ziggy chased Mr. Kitty up the tree. Well, to be fair, I didn't suggest he chased him. I suggested... That, you indu that he induced him? That he induced him. Like, hey, dude, wouldn't it be fun to go up there? Yeah. You should try it. I'll tell all the girls how hot you are. Exactly. Fair. Actually, no, but it was, so Ziggy is, I mean, you all know that Ziggy's a weirdo, and he's a bit violent and antisocial, but poor dude did not know what to do today without his, like, he and Mr. Kitty hang out together, and they do their thing. He just kept going, like, out the cat door, and then coming back in the cat door, and wandering around the house, and then going back out the cat door, and back in the cat door, and wandering, like, he didn't know what to do without his kitty buddy. It was very sad. And at that point, I was thinking Mr. Kitty was probably, you know, 
not no more in this world so I'm really glad he's okay the running I know right what a great friend Ziggy is Ziggy is definitely the hold my beer and watch this cat and now I'll hold your beer and you do that too alright so I'm progressing along on my piece um, and this is I'm just gonna do a single wrap so so I don't have a ton to do okay I turned down the exposure well hi Susan I feel like I just saw you but you missed the story about Ziggy in the or not Ziggy Mr. Kitty in the tree also I turned down the exposure and I feel like now that was maybe a bad idea but we're gonna see because I'm gonna turn it up and things might get scary bright. No, that's actually better. It was scary bright before. Okay, so I'm just continuing on. So again, I've got this going under and then I'm going to go over with my needle and through. So you're passing twice through the hole of each bead. So this definitely, ooh, definitely a solid choice, Susan, for sure. Um, and then pull it all through make sure you hold it see now it's like extra bright someday I'll get my lighting situation sorted out I swear um, and then make sure you give it a good shimmy and there we go so you'll notice as you're doing this that you're gonna have two distinct patterns of thread on your one side you're gonna have diagonals of thread and ideally all of your diagonals should be parallel to each other and on the other side you're going to have straight pieces of thread and that's just because of the fact that this is the side that wraps under and then this is the side that goes back over so you're coming at your piece from different angles um, each time so again one more bead and I'm going to take that bead so that bead's naturally going to fall next to your leather. Now, you can tell which way you need to swing this bead by looking at these lines. So if I'm gonna mimic that line, that mean my, means my bead needs to go that way, which is actually over in this instance instead of under. That's because I have flipped over my work. It would have been under if I'd been holding it the same way I did before. Hi, Jan, how are you? How's everything? So um, one of my longtime clients was in today. Um, I knew she was a teacher. What I did not know is that she's a lighting designer and technical theater teacher, which is totally cool. I'm sorry, Jan. Sorry, it's meh. I've been fighting off bronchitis for the last three days. That I, that definitely gets a solid, solid meh as well. And though at least that is a solo battle and does not involve fighting combatants that are not, you know, microscopic. I think I'm on the mend. I just have, you know, it's always difficult for me when I start to feel better to continue to rest. I'm like, oh, I feel better. I should, you know, be productive and do things. And then, you know, four hours later, I'm like, wow, I feel like absolute shit again we're what oh <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> Heather said Heather's officially declared we're doing away with the cussing rule in the drinking game tonight because we would die because I am on a lot of drugs to be functional and so apparently I'm extra cussy tonight I'm a cussy hussy so there's that, so there's my under, and now is my over. Like so. But, yes, the joys of being a small business person, sick days aren't necessarily in the, in the cards, you just kind of have to drug yourself up, which is fine if you can drug yourself up. My problem on Monday was I was so nauseous 
from the postnasal drip that the, and I realize you all really want to know about my sinuses. Like I'm, I know that everyone was waiting with bated breath for this conversation where I tell you all about my postnasal drip. I mean, come on, like what better entertainment are you going to get on Twitch tonight than me talking about postnasal drip? Um, but yeah, I get so nauseous from the postnasal drip that then um, the medicine to stop the postnasal drip won't stay down. So I actually, um, we actually closed Beating Dreams early on on Monday. I, anybody who was trying to, oh, I need to change the voicemail. Um, so any, if any, if, if anybody came on Monday and we were closed, I do apologize, but I just was sick as a dog. Um, so I actually had to go get some anti-nausea meds, and once I got those on board and could get the other meds in my system, then everything uh, improved greatly. What? I'll ask after. I mean, you can ask now. Well, no, I'll ask after. No, it's okay. Okay. Unless you, unless straight and you want an excuse to not hear about the post nasal drip. <laughs> well, I think I'm done with the post nasal drip, but ask your question. Wait, what's two more of the petrified? What? Thank you. I fixed it. <laughs> I fixed it and I didn't even have to do anything but sit here. I love when that happens. But yeah, so I'm doing much better now that I can actually keep down medication to mitigate my symptoms, but I'm still so bad at resting when I don't. Like, I'll rest when I feel like utter trampled poo, but if I'm feeling good, I'm really bad at resting. Um, here's another trick. If you if your bracelet starts to go kind of wonky and wobbly, just take the leathers and just pull. And what you what that'll do is it'll stretch the leather a little bit. It'll even everything out. So I'm going for a seven inch bracelet here. Uh, so what do I have? I have, and I'm gonna have a, a closure. All right, I've got three and a half inches. Okay, so my closure is gonna be about an inch. So I really only need another. Um, two and a half inches to get to six inches. So I'm just gonna keep going with that. So Corvus was working with some really cool things on her stream last night. She had these awesome resin coffins that she made with dried flowers and color change powder, I think, and they were amazing. She had cool holographic stickers that she was making and um, she made a necklace for a stuffed hedgehog, which is what Heather won in the giveaway. And so, or a porcupine, was it a porcupine or a hedgehog? Hedgehog, okay. So yeah, she was doing some super fun stuff. And she is delightful as always and fun to watch. And we had a fun um, conversation about how streaming is not glamorous. Like there are all of these, you know, influencers and, and Twitchers and everything who, you know, make it present like it's a very glamorous op occupation. And it's totally not. Stuff is always going wrong. Things are always falling. And sometimes your ass gets sweaty. Sometimes your cameras fall, fall down. You know, I, I literally stream in like, 24 inches of space here like it it's not glamorous and as a former performer I can verify that you know behind the scenes is never glamorous like it, it everything goes into making it glamorous on stage but behind the scenes you've got once again sweaty asses BO getting naked backstage for quick changes in front of God and everybody <coughs> And your ex-boyfriend um, shared bathrooms in the dressing rooms co-ed shared bathrooms in the co-ed shared dressing rooms which means that if somebody you know goes boombie as we used to call it in high school in the bathroom the entire dressing room stinks because there's no ventilation to move the BO or the other odors out yeah it's definitely um, yeah 
that's why they call it theater because it's 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 all about telling a story, creating an image, creating a performance, you know, but the performance is just a performance, it's not reality. I mean, I have made issues with the movie Black Swan, but there are some things in there that are very, very close to real. You know, and lucky us streamers that we, we don't, we can just pretend to be glamorous. We don't have to be glamorous. Like, I don't actually have to have a giant, <coughs> <coughs> beautiful studio to work in. I can have my little area here, and I can hang out with you guys, and I can make cool projects without having to be a gazillionaire. It's obviously time for more cough syrup, but we'll do that before the next stream. So I'm just, I'm just, no, not that. So I'm just going along. So I've got... Um, a nice little line of tourmalines going. I've probably got about two inches left. So I'm going to continue on with that. So our sale tonight is definitely going to be starting around... <laughs> I think I need some sleep. Truer words were never spoken, Jen. I promise I will get some sleep after the sale. But I've got new beads to sell. Also, to be fair, I am doped up on a lot of decongestant and cough medicine. So there's that. So I may, I, I may not just be sleepy, I may also be stoned. Oh, John, you're so sweet. No, I'm, I, I'm, I'll be fine for the sale, I promise. Am I that bad, really? Like, am I rambling that badly? Oh my god, you're so sweet. I really appreciate that, like from the bottom of my heart, Jen. I will, I will, let's compromise. I will try and keep the sale tonight. Oh, so to be fair, I actually feel much better. All the crud that was trying to settle in my lungs now is just trying to, is, is coming out and I've been taking lots of expectorant so that it, it gets out but let's compromise I will try and keep the sale tonight to one hour only and I will not tell any stories unless there is an update on the cat in the tree so that that's my compromise that I offer but um, I at least Oh, I felt so bad on Monday. On Monday, I had a, I had a 99 degree fever when I came to work, and then we closed early. And so by the time I left work, I had a fever of 100, which is a lot for me because my normal is is not 98.6.6. It's about um, 97.6. So a 99 degree fever is for me. Um, more than it seems like for most people. Um, all right, one hour sale, no recap. I think I can live with that. So I feel I have no fever anymore. I had a, I had a low grade fever this morning, but I'm pretty sure it's gone. And I don't feel dizzy anymore. So now it's just every, all the critters that decided they were gonna nest in my lungs trying to come out through my face. Totally sounds like a horror movie. Um, which, speaking of, and now I'm just rambling because I'm, I'm finishing the project. Um, so let's see. So I tried to watch Shining Veil on Stars. I don't know if anybody's seen that. It's a horror series starring Courtney Cox. And <laughs> <coughs> <clears throat> no, Corvus, I do not need you to kick my ass and tie me to the bed. I am scared. She has ropes in the bathroom. <laughs> I do have ropes in the bathroom, that's true. But those are for the fun way. Actually, they're not even there for costuming. But, um, yeah, so I tried to watch, so I needed something new to watch. So I tried Shining Veil, which, like I said, is a, what the heck 
have I done here? There we go. Which is a horror series on stars with Courtney Cox. And I don't know why I tried to watch it because I do not like horror. I don't like spooky. Um, I feel like if you liked horror, it might be good. Um, it's very slow moving though. It's There's a whole lot of build up to the, I know, right? Dual purpose ropes. Why not? Um, there's a whole lot of, of slow buildup, and I did not finish it. I got three episodes. I have not seen Pride, Prejudice, and Zombies, Jan, though I really, um, I need to. I know. Oh, thank you, Susan. Um, but, yeah, I didn't finish it. It was, it wasn't bad. It was just, I don't do horror, and I was like three episodes in, and I was like, why am I watching this? I don't do horror. Yeah. Um, but so then I started watching uh, Gaslit because I just now realized or remembered that I have a Stars subscription and decided that I need to start using it because I'm paying for it. So I started watching Gaslit, the one with Julia Roberts about Watergate, and that was good. Um, it was very interesting. It's interesting, you know, it, it's very much about you know, the way that humans can just self-destruct and in the process destroy everything around them. But I enjoyed it. I really did. I thought Julia Roberts was awesome. And there were a ton of other actors in it that I knew, which I was surprised. I kept having to Google people. I'd be like, where is that person from? Where is that person from? Um, so there were a lot of people from the Sorkin, Sorkin verse. I don't know if he officially has a verse, but anyway um okay yes what streaming services ghosts on corvus because i've been seeing ads for that okay i've got one more inch which is like six more beats but yeah history and ghosts as long as it's comedy like god what is that shoot i can't even remember the name of it now um there's a movie about ghosts. I realize that that narrows it down not a bit, but it's a funny movie about ghosts and there's a couple and they go to like this castle. I think it's in Ireland and it's haunted. And I swear I didn't make this up, but I can't remember what it's called. I'm gonna have to do some uh, major Googling, but it's, it's a very campy movie, but I quite enjoy it. So, if it's on ABC, like, okay, so I can watch it on Paramount Plus, which I think I have. Laura, do you ever forget what, what streaming services you're actually subscribed to? Because I do. Okay, so what's everyone else watching that's fun? Because I finished Gaslit, and now I'm just back to watching Studio 60 which I can watch, you know, pretty much forever, but what el what's everyone else watching that's fun? Give me some recommendations, please. If you're so inclined. What's that on, Jen? And yeah, do me a favor if you, if you are I've watched all of Lucifer Corvus. They have have they added new episodes? I love Lucifer. Lucifer is amazing, and I love Tom. What's his bucket? And Tom Ellis. He's and I actually loved love him from um, the British comedy Miranda, which if you guys haven't seen Miranda is hilarious. But he's like this pudgy um, chef like semi dorky guy though not as dorky as Miranda and um so I fell in love with him then and then he showed up on Lucifer as this like ripped hot you know devil person and I was like hello yes please oh right it was the end I do remember that it was a good end though but yes so yeah I've done all of Lucifer I could rewatch Lucifer it's true but Love Between Fairy and Devil, okay. I will check that out on Netflix. 
Anyone else have recommendations? I got one more bead and I'm going to show you all how to end this thing. I haven't seen Virgin River. What is the premise of that? Like, I feel like I've heard about it. Brooklyn Nine-Nine, is that a cop one, Corvus? I do love me a good crime procedural. Um, Tom Ellis was on a few episodes of Merlin. I don't know that I'm willing to wade through Merlin just for Tom Ellis. Much as I love fantasy. <laughs> I've watched all of Outlander Ace, which I'm pretty sure you know. Um, and, but I do think there's another, ah, crime and comedy. That's cool. Also, has anybody watched the new, is the, is the Amazon Lord of the Rings series out? Yeah. Has anybody watched it? How is it? I haven't watched it. I also haven't watched House of the Dragon. Okay, so now it's time to finish this off. It's good, okay. All right, we've got three good. So, okay, I guess that's what I'm watching next. Um, which, interesting story, because apparently I'm not telling stories on the sale, so I'm going to tell a story now real quick. So my friend um, Stella from high school is a professional makeup artist now, and she works in um, New York and sometimes in L.A. And, so, and um, she works on, on a lot of TV, um, and she's the friend on my newsfeed who will post pictures of, like, just this person with like guts spilling out and like gore everywhere and I'm like oh my god and then I, I look at who it is I'm like oh that's Stella that's all makeup like that's amazing but so she was posting photos of like she said you know working on a new project for Amazon she was posting photos of elf ears and stuff and I'm like what in the heck does Amazon have to do with elf ears and so Heather actually figured it out because she got the ad before I did and she was like I figured it out so anyway, so she was working on the um, the um, Rings of Power. I think she was doing the promos. I don't know if she actually worked on the series, but she was working on the promos. Okay, so I've done. I've made my whole length. So now I've got to finish this off. So ideally, I want this all to be even. I want my um, leathers to be parallel. If my beads are a little uneven, it's okay. But the main thing is I want my leathers to be straight. I don't want it to be twisted to one side or the other. Then I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to tie it off around this piece of leather. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to put my needle up between my leathers and then so it's going to make a loop like so, this tiny thread loop here. And we're going to go ahead and then take my needle through the thread loop try not to catch any see I caught my extra piece of leather in there that's not what we want to do so get that out of there and then just pull that nice and tight and then we're gonna do that again so up I'm going to hold these both so that that one doesn't get caught and then through my loop tighten it down and snip it off all right and then I'm going to go ahead and make these three into a knot that goes right there so I'm going to go around and through with all three of those cords Oh, and I have not seen the travel log show. Is that also on Stars Jan? Because that I feel like would be fun. Sam and Graham and Kilts, right? Okay, so I've got my my little knot there. And then I'm gonna do the receptacle for my button. So to do that, I'm gonna tie another knot that's right. So I want my receptacle to be as long as my button, just a little bit longer. 
So I'm going to take that, I'm going to tie another overhand knot. So again, that's just around and put your ends through. Pull. All right, and there we go. So now it's time to, to glue and trim. So I'm going to take my hypo cement and I'm going to put a dot of glue on my beginning knot. I'm going to put a dot of glue on my ending knot. And then I'm going to put a little bit on this knot right here just to make sure that everything stays in place. Wow, okay, so Sam goes skinny dipping in the North Sea. That's exciting. And then the last thing I'm going to do for this bracelet is I'm going to cut off all of my extra bits. So I'm just going to take my snips and I'm going to cut those off as close to my bracelet as I can. And then my, en my ends of leather, I like to... Um, be fancy and I like to cut them at an angle and I like to cut them um, not at the same. Yes. All right. So I need to watch Men in Kilts. I need to watch Rings of Power. I need to watch Ghosts. Thank you all for the the watching recommendations. I'm super excited about that because um, my current current side hustle crafty project is um, making, like I said, hair floofs for Renaissance hats, which doesn't require a ton of brain cells. Um, so I can actually have something in the background that's a, that I can pay a little bit more attention to um, rather than something that I need to completely ignore like when I'm working on being dream stuff. <laughs> Fair. Um, okay, so, ta-da! One loomed gemstone bracelet with green tourmaline. Um, so yeah, this this turned out really well. So there's my there's my button in my receptacle. I've got a nice seven inch bracelet. Of course, if you're gonna um, if you need a bigger bracelet, just use more beads, extend it a little bit more. Your two feet of leather should still be sufficient even if you want a bracelet that's a little bigger than this because I did cut off a solid eight inches of leather, four from each side. And um, if you're concerned about running out of leather, just use you know two and a half feet instead of two feet. Also, you can make these extra long so they wrap around your wrist multiple times like the Chan Lu bracelets. Um, in which case I will usually allow for two feet of leather and seven inches of beads per wrap around your wrist. So that's it for the Beating Dreams tutorial stream this evening. Um, we're going to be back in about 20 minutes at about 7.45 with the Beating Dreams live merchandise sales stream. We're going to do, um, per Jen's suggestion, we're going to do a one hour sale tonight. I'm going to try to keep it to the point, not do too many stores, but I'm going to show you some really pretty beads. So I'm going to go pull those beads right now and we'll be back on this channel. Twitch.tv forward slash Beating Dream in 20 minutes with a live sale. We'll see you soon. Bye.